Welcome, everybody, and welcome to Vino and Vision Coffee with the Coaches today. My name is Chiara Marapodi. I'm an integrative life coach. I'm also an affiliate life coach here at Vino and Vision, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, Brenda Klein and Stacey Wells, and our guest, Ryan Hall, today. So, Brenda and Stacey, introductions, please. Well, good morning. Um, I'm Stacey Wells. I am a certified um, life coach with Vino and Vision and also a team lead and part of the leadership program here. Hi, I am Brenda Klein and I am a certified camp coach with Vino and Vision and affiliate coach. And I am also a team lead and part of our leadership team. And then I would like to introduce Mr. Ryan Hall who is also a certified boot camp coach with Vino and Vision and is one of our colleagues. Go ahead, Mr. Hall. All right. Thank, thank you so much for the invitation to join y'all here today. I'm Ryan Hall. I'm an author, um, certified boot camp coach, along with Brenda. And um, yeah, really excited to be joining y'all here today. Well, thank you, everybody, and welcome. We're glad to have you and all the viewers, too. So, I wanted to introduce our topic today. It's actually quite a big topic. And I'm sure that there are many who resonate with this topic, the pursuit of happiness. So I want to share that happiness is something that we feel. And often people are looking for happiness in the doing, but without that state of flow in happiness, it doesn't come from a sense of authenticity and sometimes it's lost. But you know, this is a complex topic. Brenda, Stacy, and Ryan, what do you think about happiness? How do you define happiness for yourselves in your lives? Um, me personally, I believe happiness comes from within. And mm -hmm. a lot of us spend so much time in our lives trying to seek happiness from outside sources, whether it be from other people, whether it be from things, from you know, the things we eat, what we may drink, and really happiness is, um, is down within ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, and not necessarily those outside um, distractions that we believe bring us happiness. I agree. I agree. What about you, Brenda? I would have to agree. I think that happiness is it does start with the feeling are you seeking it from somewhere else from like Stacy said are you seeking it from other individuals are you seeking it from food or gambling or set obsessions or is it a true happiness that's embedded within you to where you have that stability and that peace in you that you're no longer need and you're no longer seeking from outside, but from within. Hmm, I, I agree with you. I think happiness can be found in the smallest detail. And I think what I've found is that people tend to look for the grand gestures, the grand feeling without really taking the time to presence. I think presencing, for me at least, being present in the moment and taking time to take that breath and look around and say, well, where am I? Who am I in this moment? And what is presenting itself really allows to find that source of joy in the small. Ryan, what are your thoughts on happiness and the thing that comes up for me is, as we're, as we're speaking about this, is that happiness for me is a choice because you can be stuck in, you can be stuck in, you know, suboptimal circumstances. You can have, you know, you can have worries about money, about your job, about your relationships, about you know, about your health around your children, your, you know, your pets, you can have all these worries, but if you choose to see the, you know, just see the little things in life that life brings you, there's just, I feel like there's so much kind of untapped on that. Um, like happiness to me 
is a choice. And it's also choosing to be fully self-expressed, being able to speak my mind, tell my story, be able to share myself with other people, be able to share what lights me up with other people, I think is just my textbook definition of happiness. And it doesn't really come from those external validations. It really comes from just making a choice to see the beauty, see the love, see the, you know, see the little things in life that, um, that if you stay stuck in your circumstances, if you, if you stay stuck in your, this kind of woe is me story, you're never going to get to that point. Well, thank you. And, you know, I was thinking as you were talking, what came to me is really when we're stuck in our head and the narrative, and, you know, I, I want to put something into place. I, I want to honor that often we do have trauma. I, I don't want to dismiss that. And I think that would be me not being of service to those that are going through something that is very difficult and traumatic. And, you know, I want to honor that because it's in those dark moments where we see the small lights um, that are able to illuminate the gems that will bring us a sense of connection, a sense of finding some sort of joy, because I think it's important to honor that because maybe there are some people who are going through a traumatic time. And I want to touch on the connection piece, because when we're stuck in our head and we're thinking about something, you know, we can grasp the, the, the left brain or the ego mind is very good at making a story and making a quick story that is easily digestible, easily um cycled through and looped but actually it's the heart mind sometimes called the intuition or the right brain or connected to the right brain where we're going to find these gems and to find the wisdom and sometimes joy comes out of discomfort because we've gone through the dark night of the soul understood found the wisdom and it's there's an aha moment so there are different types of happiness and joy it's not the illusion of pleasure principle of the distractions that Brenda you mentioned and, and you Stacy and the illusion from the outside world that all that glitters is golden it's not that it's those internal gems often they feel fleeting because we're used to being in our head but if we start to connect and we start to expand instead of doing a plus b equals c and that's it that's our narrative we're holding on to that the letting go of that within itself for me is a form of happiness like it's a relief because you're not chasing i don't think happiness can be chased and the more that we pursue and we chase that happiness the less we find because we're in a, a state of thinking what it might mean and having expectations when actually when it comes to you and you attract it and it's in the small connection that you have with a little child, with an animal, with nature, with each other. It is like breathing inspiration. So thank you. You inspired me all because that's what I got about what happiness has been for me through my journey. I would think I would agree with you there, Kiara, and you, Ryan, as well, that it is very much a choice. There are choices that we make, and it is our mindset. Do we choose to look at the positive or look at the negative? And Kiara, thank you for bringing up about trauma and those type situations, because that is a very real situation. And it is so easy to become fully encased and entrapped in that pain of that trauma and that traumatic experience that we stay stuck there. But when we choose, as you mentioned, Ryan, to see that small light at the end, to stay focused on the positive and on the hope of it, there can still be joy and there can uh, for a hope for the future. There can still be joy within us that carries us forward through the pain and takes us out of that dark valley into the light beyond. So that once we're beyond it, we're so much stronger for it because we held on to that hope 
we held on to that positive perspective, even through the pain, because I hate to go back to cliches, but even the finest gold is refined in fire. And diamonds become diamonds because they're under immense pressure for eons before they come up from the earth to be what we now see as something so beautiful. And I think that happens with us as well. We go through painful situations. We go through those dark valleys. We're held to immense pressure. But how do we respond to it? And how we respond to it is that choice. Do we hold on to hope to get us through? Or do we allow ourselves to be suffocated by the pain and to move forward? Because there is joy at the end if we hold on into that light. And it starts from that within. I love that. I want to ask each of you, if I may, when we're in a space of hopelessness, how do we find under pressure that spark? Because it's all inside of us. In that moment, it seems dimmed. But how do we find that one spark of hope and the resources, because I feel that, you know, we have community and that's what Vino and Vision is really about, a community of like-minded individuals who are also here to, to help themselves and others through their journey. So what would be one thing that would really be a support for somebody to reach out so that they can find that spark of hope in the darkest night of the soul so that they can begin to believe again. Because I think with happiness and joy, when we've lost the belief, it's easy, like you said, to get stuck in there. Um, so what would be one thing that you think would be useful or supportive when we're in that state? Um. I believe a lot of times it's just um, communicating with others and having that, that person that you trust that you can open up to and kind of share your experience. Um, and that person will allow you to go through the feelings that you need to go through with that experience, but then offer support at the end that, you know, is encouragement that it will pass and that that happiness is still within you. It's just been clouded you know, by the dark night, as you said earlier, and that it will, it will come to pass. I think I would agree with that as well, that yes, you do need to be open and you do need to have communication. You do need to have a way to vent. For some people, it may be prayer. For some people, it may be meditation. For each of us, we're different. And where is your faith? Different people have faith in different things. And so I don't want to, to, to minimize that for anybody. And even though I would say you don't need the external validation, sometimes it helps to find those outlets, those little mental breaks, not a break from reality, but just a way to just allow the spirit to calm for even a short time. If it's Kiara, you with your horses or yeah. Ryan, you in writing or, um, Stacy, you in doing your yoga or whatever it may be for each of us there's something different, but there's something that brings us joy in the doing to help, I guess, supplement the feeling and to push that feeling along to help us find those outlets to the dark night in positive ways without the external validation and without finding negative sources like alcohol and food and gambling and those things that become addictions and vices that hold us stuck in a place. How can we find positive ways to, to do and to feel at the same time? Oh yeah. I love that. And if I, if I could just kind of piggyback on that, there's really two things that came, uh, that came to mind for me. Um, when you're, when you're really kind of going through you know, going through a dark place, going through some dark times. Um, just keep your just keep your eyes, keep your ears, and keep your heart open, because if you close all that stuff off, you're never going to see the beauty that's out there. You're never going to see the truth that's out there. Um, you know, just just for example, just yesterday, I was really kind of feeling some stress and some. Uh, and some tension in a couple of projects that I've got going on. But as I was working, I had 
uh, I had some music playing, which I usually do. And a song came up that just instantly lifted my mood and just got me out of that funk, got me out of that place. And I'm like, if I had, if my ears, eyes, and heart were closed, there's no way I could have experienced that. So just keep your eyes, keep your ears, keep your heart open because there's going to be, there's gold out there. You just have to be willing to, you, you just have to be willing to stay open to it. And another thing is that just when you're, when you're fighting it like that, just remind yourself this too shall pass. This too shall pass. It may pass like a kidney stone, but this too shall pass. <laughs> because you have survived every one of your worst days that you've ever experienced. You're going to survive this too. You're going to get through this too. And you're going to find the light. You're going to find the gold at the, uh, you know, at the end of the whatever metaphor you want to use. So yeah, this too shall pass. Thank you. It's very beautiful. And I agree with you. I I do feel that connection for me is everything, whether you're going through the dark night of the soul, you found happiness, or you're on your way to happiness. I feel that in order for us to be connected, we often have to disconnect some, disconnect from the patterns um, and acknowledging what we brought in the circles and cycles of what brings us to the point of experiencing the discomfort because in there is the beauty the gem the diamond as you you mentioned of the wisdom of being called the hero and heroine's journey be called to elevate, to renew, to rebirth, so that it's not going to be just the joy that you've had in the past, it's going to be something new. And what we do is we tend to hold on to, oh, well, that was joy for me then, and that's what I'm going to have next. No, we can't. If we have been under pressure and we had a diamond becoming, it's not going to be like it was before. It's like the caterpillar alchemizing into the butterfly. It's a totally different transformation so let's re, re recap a little bit because happiness is a feeling and a being but also a doing like we've said and in finding connection to presencing connection to music connection to faith connection to others who are there to hold us, either walk in front of us, beside us, or behind us, and that we feel supported and safe. I think that is, when we're walking on coals, it's not going to be forever. And when we get to the other side, I did that. That was me. And so there are different types of joy and happiness and feeling and connecting with that, which really resonates with the truth of love. Because I think love is everything. Connection and love are intertwined. And we've had these together. We've had self-love, love just in the past recently. But it's all interconnected. Because honestly, to keep the heart open, it's love that's going to get us there. It's a state of joy. In traditional Chinese medicine, they say that joy is actually a feeling from the heart. So we're coming full circle with all of our sessions and, you know, and, you know, Vino and Vision, happiness is part of the modules that we have for our program too. So there is this experience of transformation that allows us to see beyond today with our mind. And so, you know, I'd like to invite you to drop a gem that you feel you'd like to leave with everyone listening to this about our topic today of happiness. Ooh, big challenge here, Ms. Kiara. <laughs> yes, definitely. So I will start. So, and this is this is good. We I would like to leave people with using their imagination 
picture the candle. And as you see the flame of the candle, that's the light that you have with it. And as you meditate on that candle, you're going to be able to see that you're a part of the candle. The candle is a part of you because the flame is you. So that is my drop in my gem just for today. Um, okay, so go ahead, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's hard to top that one because that is pretty, that's pretty amazing um, thinking of it that way. Um, another thing um, that I would piggyback on that is while meditating on that flame and realizing you're that flame, thinking about all the little things that bring joy and happiness into your life. And whether it's, um, it's a pet or, you know, a feeling that comes across when you're doing an activity or having an experience that you really enjoy, just fully embracing and being present in that moment and feeling that feeling and allow it to take over and just blossom inside of you and, and bring out that inner flame. Yes. I would like to piggyback then a little farther off of both of you and continuing that journey. For me, mindset is so powerful. The words we say are so powerful. Indeed. So as you envision that flame and the things that bring you joy now, think of who you are, who you were created to be. See where you envision yourself down the road from now, whether that's an expansion of where you are presently. And if you're in a good place now, but you can see that growing and building and going there, or if you're in that dark valley, picture yourself now in the peak where you're back in the light. Picture a path being created from where you are to where you're going and tell yourself those words that will build you in your inner man, your inner woman, and that will create you to be who you want to be, how you want your life to be, and envision that path and taking those steps to get there. Because words are so powerful. With our words, we speak life or we speak death. Blessing or cursing, the choice is yours. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what hits for me is what keeps you connected to your inner child? What keeps you connected to that inner little boy, to that inner, inner, inner little girl that was, um, you know, that is still with you? You know, one of my favorite Earth, Wind, and Fire songs is That's the Way of the World. And there's a line in that song that just is, is like really loud to me right now. A child is born with a heart of gold. The way of the world makes his heart grow cold. Stay with that inner child. Connect with that inner child. Learn to fall in love with that inner child because I think that's what's going to lead you you know, finding that joy, finding that happiness in the end. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this time that we have together. Now, Brenda, I know that we have a new program that you would like to share with everybody. So I'm going to give you space. Thank you so much for that, Kara. Yes, I am very excited to announce to all of our friends and family and followers out there that Ryan and I will be starting an external your first 100k boot camp coming up in January January of 2024 so what this is is it's an opportunity for business owners entrepreneurs um, those healing entrepreneurs and those solopreneurs to find a way to to help to grow their businesses in a different kind of way. We look at, yes, the, the typical business building of things, but we look at the mindset and starting from within. It really does start from within. And to change that mindset and to grow and to learn the appropriate ways to move forward and sometimes how to get out of our own way because we find it starts from within and we're often our biggest enemies and that we're in our own way. So we 
we really work on the mindset as well as the business skills to move forward and help you to achieve your first 100K because that is really just the starting point. And Ryan, I'd like you to expand on that a little bit more. I'd love to. Yes, it's a, it's a challenging program. I'm not going to lie. It's, gonna, it, it's a challenging program. It's going to challenge you mentally. It's going to challenge you spiritually. But once you get out on the other side of it, you're going to be a whole new entrepreneur. You're going to be a whole new business owner because sometimes you have to break down. Um, and I speak from experience on this. Um, but sometimes you have to break down a lot of old habits, a lot of old, um, uh, a lot of old mindset, a lot of old just funk. <laughs> but once you build that, but once you build that back up, um, you're going to be able to take your business to places you had no idea were were even available. Um, like I said, it's a challenging twelve weeks, but it is an incredible incredibly rewarding 12 weeks um it's a you know it, it's a small group uh, we're going to be limiting it limiting it to eight seats um and um brenda and i would love to see you i think uh the, the date on our first session is january 9th right that tuesday at that is correct yeah at Correct me on the time here is 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern, or am I backwards that, on that? That sounds right. That sounds okay. right, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, so it will be one hour per week, virtually in Zoom. We will start with week one will actually be an orientation, and then we will start the true week one the following week on the 16th, 12-week session with a one-week follow-up at the end. So you'll spend 14 weeks all together with Ryan and I and seven colleagues and you will work on things individually, but you'll have a team they're supporting you as well. You'll have new strategic partners in there within your group. And you'll find that there's a lot of accountability as well as transformation in there. And I think it will be a very positive experience for anybody that, that is up to the challenge. <laughs> Well, thank you both. And what a wonderful program. I am so excited. And I invite anybody to connect with either of us at Vena Revision um, to, um, to join us or to suggest this transformative boot camp, which I, I think will really bring us to much more happiness. Because to be honest, when I was listening to you, Ryan, you basically summed up today's coffee with the coaches because it's breaking down the old habits to transform and arise and rebirth as new because that's where we're going to find our inner selves our inner child to naturally express itself and in that we can find the happiness within instead of seeking it without and um, so on that note i would like to thank you all brenda stacy and ryan for sharing this time with us today i am so excited um, for the new program in january and i will see you next month again for coffee with the coaches thank you so much thank you all. thank you thank you, thank you.